Hey guys, this is Bluff Monkey again. In this video, we're going to create a simple pad sound using Ableton's sampler plugin. This is a, a sampler that you can use to create all sorts of different sounds, but today we're going to create a simple pad. And what I've done is I've selected a vocal tone from my sample library. Um, let's just have a quick listen to that. Mm. So it's fairly monotone and for the purposes of this pad, this is what we want. We don't want any, anything evolving or anything too complicated because we're going to use this to create chords and melodies. So first things first, let's open up the sampler and I'm going to drop this sample straight in. We can switch this channel off now because we don't need it. And if I just play this, you can already play melodies and, and chords with it, but we've got a little bit of a, a kind of attack at the beginning there, which we don't necessarily want, or we don't want it the way it is now. So we've got a couple of options here. What I want to do is I want to put the sampler into sustain mode. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to set a starting point for the sample, and it allows you to set a loop point so that you'll, you'll get a start point, which you can set here. This is where the sample will start from when you hit one of your notes. And then you can also set a loop start and end point here. So this is where the sample will start from when you hit a note. And this is where it'll loop around as you hold the note down. So let's have a look at that. Now you can see it looping as I've still got the note held down. Now one of the issues of doing this is you will get some clicking because where the sample loop starts and ends, it's not going to be in exactly the same spot. So what we can do to help alleviate that, the UI here is quite small and it's a little bit fiddly, but what you want to try and do is you want to try and find a zero crossing point and that's where the sample or the waveform crosses this middle line. So if we do that at the start and at the end, it won't be perfect because the amplitude at the start and the end of the loop point won't be exactly the same either, but it will help a little bit. So let's do that. So that's a bit better. And then what you can also do is you can crossfade the start and end points as well. So let's try that. It's so that's softened that off quite a lot. Let's just play with the crossfade amount. Okay, you don't necessarily need to worry about the pulsating. That's part of the character of using a sampler to create sounds like this. A lot of the times when you heard um, pads and stuff created in samplers in the 90s, you'd hear looping points and that was just part of the charm or not. <laughs> it depends on your viewpoint, really. But what we can also do is this loop point can be set to go backwards and forwards. So if we have a click on this, look at the UI. This is where the sample will start and then it will loop backwards and forwards between these two points here. So you can choose either one of those. Right, so the next thing we need to do is if we come over to filter global section, what it will allow us to do is set our ADSR envelope up. So we can create some attack here and a release, which is a fairly standard kind of um, envelope shape for a pad. This is note off. I'm not holding a note, that might be a little bit too long. Yeah, 12.8, so let's have it for four or five or six seconds, something like that and hear what that sounds like. I think that's still a little bit too long. Note off. Yeah, that's better. Right, so we've got our basic pad sound. Um, the other thing you might want to do with this is put some reverb over the top of it as well. So let's just, let's just EQ out some bottom end first. find a nice reverb. I've got a bit of a favourite in the um, able to reverbs which is this large space chorus. I use this one quite a lot. So take out the bottom end. So 
so you know that's almost quite choral you could use that in plenty of ambient tracks you could use that in um a, a breakdown but it's it's a good way of getting an alternative kind of pad sound rather than the the usual synthesized um pads that you hear all the time and i would encourage you to try and use various different kinds of samples as well you don't just necessarily need to use these flat tones so have a go at that and i hope you found something useful in this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.